So the next question is always going to be, once you determine the rate law, you put those uh, orders in, uh, up top there, or those exponents to which those concentrations are taken, then you're going to be asked to find the k value, the rate constant value. So what do you do? Well, take, well, usually the lines of data are all um, uh, very easy to operate with. So you can take one line of data, one trial of data, and plug it into the, to the formula. What you're supposed to do is take every line of data, do a calculation for everyone, and then average all of your constants together. That's the best way to do it. Look, I'm just going to take one line of data here because all the data lines were absolutely equal to one another. And so, in terms of producing a k-value. And I'm going to take that one line of data and I'm going to put it into this rate law that we call it here. By the way, that was, yeah, to the one there. So, if I manipulate this formula to solve for k, which is rate over the concentration of the NH4 positive, but it's squared, divided by the NO2 negative, then I'm going to take that rate and put it in for there, 1.50 times 10 to negative 3 moles per liter per second, and that equals the concentration of this ion here, but it's squared, divided by, again, the concentration of the NO2 negative. And when you do that math here, you get 3. Now, what do you get for a unit? Well, now, for a unit, let me just get some room here to be able to write that down. What you're doing is you're going to take moles per liter seconds or moles per liter per second and you're dividing by this, right, which is moles squared per liter squared times moles per liter, which is moles cubed per liters cubed. Do you get what I just wrote there? Okay, now look. And by the way, you do have to be able to get these units right. They're, they're, this is going to be a demand, and this is going to be something that's going to be marked. So you've got to be really careful about this. That's the same as saying times the reciprocal of that, which was liters cubed per mole cubed. You with me? Right? It's a reciprocal. So now, take a look. That liters cancels that to a squared. That moles goes squared here, gets rid of that. That second stays. And the unit is going to be liters squared per moles squared seconds. So that is the unit. This is liters squared per moles squared seconds. That's the unit for the rate constant k. Now, I want to show you something here. This is third over, order overall. And it ends up being liters squared per moles squared seconds. If it was second order overall, it would be liters per mole seconds. <laughs> and if it was fourth order overall, it would be liters cubed per moles cubed seconds. You get the idea? Whatever order it is, drop down one power and go liters over moles if it's a concentration given in moles per liter. It could be actually uh, uh, molecules per cubic centimeter or something silly like that. That's okay. You just know that you're going to put the volume on top and that one, uh, that, that the quantity down below. Put the seconds always in there. Now, by the way, what if it was first order overall? If it was first order overall, there would be no liters here and there would be no moles here. You'd get rid of them because that's to the zero power. That's the, the, the liters would be to the zero and the moles would be to the zero. That would just be one over seconds. And you could say, well, that's hertz. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> so there's the unit for something that would be uh, first order. If it was zero order, zero would be to the negative one, and what you would have for a unit is moles per liter seconds, which would be the exact same unit as the rate of the reaction, because if something was to the zero order, no kidding, where there were zeros here, or the concentrations have no effect on the rate of reaction, then your unit here for K is going to be identical to the unit for rate. That's pretty cool.